Exploring and challenging traditional wedding norms can lead to more personalization and a more meaningful wedding celebration. So let's talk today about what traditions you can ditch or omit from your wedding planning. Let's go. Hello lovely couples, I'm Lauren, wedding planner, owner of Bluebird Creative and Bride Academy, and I provide a weekly dose of wedding planning goodness for the modern couple as well as digital downloads. In this video, we are gonna talk about eight traditions that you can tweak or omit from your wedding planning to make it more personal and make it more meaningful for you. Let's do this. Number one is the garter toss or the bouquet toss. I'm gonna to be perfectly honest with you guys, in the seven years that I have been planning weddings, I have not had a single client do the garter toss. So I don't feel bad about saying, just don't bother with that one, if I'm perfectly honest with you. And I think I've maybe had two clients, maybe one this year do a bouquet toss, and it wasn't in the traditional sense, they tweaked it and I'll share. And maybe one other, maybe two others in the last couple of years. Literally guys, nobody's doing it. Probably because they've spent so much money on the most beautiful of bouquets and more people now want to keep their bouquets as a keepsake and send them off. So they don't wanna be throwing them and ruining them. What you can do instead, if you still want to go about this tradition, is you could use one of the bridesmaids bouquets and throw that instead. Keep your bouquet if you're deciding to use it as a keepsake. But this tradition is definitely not being seen that often anymore at all. So if you want to omit it, I give you permission to. Number two, and I think this one is extremely important, is formal gender specific roles. I feel like that's a tongue twister and hard to get out. So choosing people to play certain roles within your wedding, not based on their gender, but based on the meaningful connections that you have with those people. So for a bride, Bride, for example, you don't have to only choose women for your bridal party and as bridesmaids. And I am seeing this happen a lot more. You know, we've got best women and we've got bridesmen. And I love that. And I feel like it's a tradition that we should definitely be embracing more if we feel that we want to and not feeling like we have to do the things because it's a tradition and we have to have women and so on. So why do ushers have to only be men? And why are the grooms men only men and so on so definitely breaking those norms if it feels right and if it feels good for you and not feeling like we have to stick into that box number three is matching bridesmaids dresses why is it that we have this tradition where all the bridesmaids have to wear exactly the same outfit i've talked about this before in fact i will link one of my bridesmaid dress videos that i've discussed but just why do we do that like Putting, choosing an outfit for your friends that they have to wear just feels bananas in everyday life. But in weddings, that's what we do. And then you may have friends that are completely different heights, sizes, shapes, and we're putting them in the same dress. I am totally here for the unmatching bridesmaids dresses. You know, if you wanna choose the color, great, and then let them choose or have that conversation together. But it is weird, isn't it, that we choose their outfits for them. I am seeing it happening less and less, but I just wanted to bring that up. And there are so many amazing companies out there now that offer such a selection of bridesmaids dresses in the same fabric and in the same color so that you can move away from that everyone's wearing exactly the same thing vibe because it's a really odd tradition. So up to you, are you gonna tweak it? Are you gonna omit it or are you keeping it? Number four is strict ceremony seating. Now, traditionally, the bride's family will sit on the left and the groom's family will sit on the right. Do you need to do that? I personally think that if you want to get rid of that, you absolutely can do. So we will, on the whole now, typically, most of our couples will say free seating, pick a seat, not a side, all of that jazz. They'll do reserve seating for the front two rows because they want to ensure that their family actually get front seats, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna have bride's family on the left and groom's family on the right. And in fact, we've had couples where they do it the other way around. And I think I've talked about this either on here or on TikTok, where when you're standing at the front and you're getting married, traditionally, you are looking at your partner's family because they're sat on the same side as them and that's where you can see like opposite. Whereas actually, if you have your family sat the other side, then you can see your family and surely that's nicer. So we've had couples adopting that this year and I love that tweak. 
So this tradition, are you gonna ditch it? Are you gonna keep it? Are you gonna tweak it? What are you gonna do? Number five is wedding favors. Now, I think this is so give or take. I have not had many clients do favors this year. I would say maybe we're on a, I would say we're on a 60-40. 60% haven't done it, 40% have done it. It's very give or take. I think a lot of people feel like they don't want to allocate their budget to a favor and they feel like it's unnecessary because their guests are already coming. They're paying for their guests to come. They're having a lovely day. The wedding itself is a treat. Why do they need to buy them a thank you for coming as well when they've paid for them to be there at the day? That is typically what it is. I don't know if the tradition comes from the fact that traditionally the bride's parents would pay for the wedding and perhaps the couple are buying the favours to say thank you. That makes a little bit more sense, but that's not really th how things work anymore all the time. Obviously, everybody's different. I feel like I have to tread carefully here. Favours. Are you going to tweak it? Are you going to keep it? Or are you going to ditch it? What are you going to do? Let me know. Number six is traditional speeches. So traditionally, you would have the father of the bride do the thank you and welcome speech. Then the groom would do a speech and then the best man would do a speech. Why do we do that? Why do we feel like now we still have to follow that protocol? One of my 2024 wedding trends, I will link them above for you, my friends, is having more brides doing speeches. I am seeing that more and people are definitely adopting that more. And actually having females coming into the speech space is definitely becoming more of a thing. And I'm loving, I'm absolutely loving that people are tweaking this tradition. So they're keeping the tradition of speeches, which I think is great, but they're tweaking the tradition to make it personal to them, to customize it to them and not feeling like it just has to be these men that do the speeches. Perhaps it's a brother, perhaps it's a sister, perhaps it's a maid of honor, perhaps it's mum, perhaps it's the bride and so on. Perhaps both the dads do the speeches. There's no sets on like which gender it needs to be or who it needs to be. Just who do you feel like would do a great speech and who do you want involved in the speeches? My one tip though, is try not to exceed half an hour because it's long. <laughs> are you gonna tweak it? Are you gonna ditch it? Are you gonna keep it? What are you gonna do? Number seven is public cake cuttings. Now, I am seeing people ditching cake cuttings in general. I'm also seeing people ditching cake and replacing with champagne towers. But I would say that I have had like a 50-50 split perhaps this year. And I'm, I'm here for both, absolutely here for both. I love a champagne tower. It's super fun and it fits in with the party vibes. I also love cake and I'm definitely here for cake. And we had some incredible cakes this year, absolutely incredible. But I am seeing couples ditching the public cake cutting. So they're not doing it in front of all their guests. It's a weird tradition. And the tradition behind it is also very odd. And Google it. I'm not going to go into it. But it's, it's a funny one. And so people are just saying, no, we don't want to cut the cake in front of our friends. It's a bit weird. They're all stood around just watching us cut it. And then we're trying to feed each other. And it's a bit uncomfortable. And I don't like it. So either they won't cut the cake. Or they will do it privately. And I'm totally here for the private cake cutting. Where they do it just the two of them. They have some lovely photos. They try some of the cake. And then the cake gets taken away. And it gets served out later. Their guests will see the cake, however, before they do the cake cutting. They just don't have all their guests gathering around for a cake cutting. So definitely one that you can tweak or omit. What are you going to do? Are you going to tweak it? Are you going to keep it? Or are you going to ditch it? Let me know. And then number eight, we have separate registrar interviews. This is something that I am starting to see couples ditch. And obviously, traditionally, you had to have separate interviews before you meet with the registrar. And only in recent years have you actually been able to have your interview together. And in Wales, you still cannot have your interview together because I didn't realise that earlier this year because a lot of my couples are having their interviews together. We had a wedding in Wales and I was like, yep, yeah, you can have your interview together. And the registrar was like, no, you can't. And I was like, why? We just did that the other week. And then I realised, oh, hang on, I'm in Wales and the rules are different. The rules are different in every county, by the way, for civil ceremonies, so definitely check them. For example, I know that in Wiltshire, you cannot like, have a live flame in a ceremony, even when it's outdoors. I know. So every county, every council has a different rule. But going back to the interviews, I'm loving seeing couples having their interviews together. Typically, these couples will do first looks together and then they have their interview together because they're like, we've seen each other. We're going to do first looks together. We've seen each other. Let's have our interview together. It saves time. We've already seen each other. Traditionally, you would have them separate because you haven't seen each other. So it depends how you want to play things. Where do I sit on this? I think I'd still keep it. I think I'd still keep the separate interview because 
I don't think I'd do a first look. That's my personal opinion. What would you do? Would you keep it, ditch it or tweak it? The only way you could ditch it is if you're having a celebrant led ceremony. But there we go. Anyway, guys, there are my eight traditions that you can potentially get rid of if you want to, or you can tweak them. Absolutely would love to know which ones you would keep, ditch or tweak. Let me know in the comments box below. I will be back next week with some more wedding planning goodness. Until then, guys, have a great week. <laughs>